What's up, everybody? We're coming to you from Podcast Central, booth number 1677 at C2E2. I'm Smithers from the Chumpcast here with my co-host, Mark. And also, we have two very special guests, Andy from the Chicago D&D Society and Joe from Pull the Lever. What is going on? Hello. We brought you guys here to get super nerdy. So, uh, first, Andy, why don't you go ahead and introduce what you guys do at the Chicago D&D Society and tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, my name's Andy. I'm from the Chicago D&D Society. Uh, we are a gaming collective uh, that is, our main goal is to try to cohesively make and grow the Chicago gaming community tabletop RPG specifically Dungeons and Dragons sure. um, <laughs> uh, we're pretty new to the scene uh, we started about a little under a year ago and it's been kind of a whirlwind since then um, we met Joe uh, play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons uh, trying to do more community outreach um, meeting fans DMs all across the city uh, playing as many games as possible uh, so it really does just fall under like anything Dungeons and Dragons we are tried to be a part of it. Okay. Did this start from you having a bunch of friends and you're like, we need to create the society for D and D? So or were you solely like, I just need to find people that will play D and D with me because I love it that much? Uh, that is half of it. Okay. Um, so there's also a Los Angeles uh, D and D society, yep. which uh, I've been watching them on Instagram, um, and they they're pretty big. And I figured, well, they're pretty cool. Like Chicago is pretty cool. Like I think we should have one of those. Like why don't we have one of those? Definitely. And so I just started an Instagram, um, and then they hit us up probably about a week later, and we're like, hey, we love your content. Like, we'd love to make you a part of our branch. Cool. So we're actually the Chicago branch of the D&D Society at large, which is um, kind of nationwide. They're trying to build societies in cities uh, across the nation. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Joe, why don't you talk a little bit about Pull the Lever? Yes, Pull the Lever. Uh, is a professional dungeon master service. Um, I do a lot of corporate team building events. Um, I also do a lot of like private events, birthday parties, bachelor parties. Um, I also do private groups. I have uh, weekly campaigns, bi-weekly campaigns, monthly campaigns. Um, basically, I bring a professional grade of Dungeons and Dragons from the DM side to your office, to your home, to your events. Um, and it has really blossomed into much more than just uh, professional DMing. Um, it started all at First Aid Comics, which is a local comic book store in Chicago. Actually, actually, Shout I, think out it's, Tom. I think it is the closest comic book store in proximity to where we are sitting right now. And the best one. Yeah, I may and say the that. best one. Ever. Sorry, we go head to head with Chuck on the <laughs> Chicago comics for First Aid. <laughs> um, and so Tom and I had this idea that D and D could be this team building exercise. Uh, for corporate team building events um, and with his blessing after I left the comic book store I've turned it into what it is now um, and now I've kind of had this grand vision that I, I share with Andy and the Chicago D&D Society of uniting the Chicago gaming community um, I've been running games all over the city in the suburbs downtown even over in Indiana and there is a thirst you know, there is a hunger for the, the gamers in Chicago. And we look outwards, you know, we see LA, we see all the celebrities, all the events, all the live streamers, there's a lot happening in New York as well. Sure. And it should be happening here. Joe, you said it perfectly. Dungeons and Dragons was created on our doorstep in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So like an hour be, north. This should I've be been to plenty of weddings there. It's great <laughs> yeah, place. exactly. You place. had no idea that was the birthplace <laughs> no of the, maybe the nerdiest thing. They have the Sprecher's yeah. Root Beer like restaurant, but exactly. that's all I know. So, yeah, I mean, Chicago should be a pilgrimage yeah. to every single Dungeons & Dragons fan. And our goal, our shared goal, is to put Chicago on the D&D community map. You know, we're looking outwards towards the east and west coast. Well, they should be looking inwards towards mm -hmm. towards us. Well, I, I should give you credit because you popped the Chumpcast Collective Cherry for D&D. &D. That is right. I mean, we've got an ongoing campaign now. You're uh, wearing a Death Saves t-shirt. I am, and <laughs> yeah. all, I have Joe to blame for all of this. This we is found all our, your fault. We found ourselves looking at Dice today for 30 minutes. We're like, what are we doing? <laughs> what You're are living, we freaking You're living doing your right life. Now. It's very addictive, but uh, it's, it's great to hear from the both of you. So you've got some events coming up. We, we do. do. Yes. Yeah, so um, I personally have a pull lever event coming up um, later in March, March 21st, uh, at First Aid Comics. Um, I'll be running sort of an open session for people to, to come in and jump on. It's an original content. Um, my uh, dungeon module is called the um, Tomb of Solomon Heartsong. 
um, and people can come and play. No experience is needed. You can have all the experience in the world. Um, again, just trying to get games open to, to the general public. Um, you know, a lot of time on Instagram, mm -hmm. I see on Reddit, on Facebook, um, people are always asking, hey, uh, I live in this area. I'm looking for a group or I'm a DM I have, and I need a group. And as, as much as we can get into these kind of public areas, comic book stores, gaming stores, other venues to provide a location for people to come and play, because it's hard to get a group together mm -hmm. uh, and, and really unite consistently, you know, at someone's home, at someone's table. Um, so that'll be happening next month. Um, this summer, I am also planning on some Dungeons & Dragons workshops. Um, I've been building nice. a, a curriculum uh, to teach new people how to play Dungeons & Dragons, uh, to teach people how to become a dungeon master, how to prep content, how to interpret content, um, and to teach people how to set up a game of Dungeons & Dragons, how to actually run it. Um, so I plan on taking this kind of like crash course in D&D um, all over the city and, and, and uh, the, the Chicago land this summer as well. Um, and of course, like, I can't do that without the help of the Chicago D and D hey. Society. Um, I'm kind of like you know one guy at Pull the Lever, um, who's you know impassioned trying to push these things forward. But you guys are a group of we got a team of nerds over growing here, growing yeah. guys uh, who are as passionate about the game. Um, I, I was approached um, to help facilitate and oversee Dungeons and Dragons at an upcoming convention uh, called Dragonfall. Um, which is a big Warhammer uh, mm -hmm. miniature terrain convention, um, cool. that, and they want to introduce D&D &D to it. Okay. Uh, and they're a big charity event. Um, all the proceeds of this event go back to you know the charities that they support, and they asked me mm -hmm. if I would facilitate and introduce and oversee Dungeons and Dragons into their convention. Nice. Um, and Andy and his team will be helping me run those tables. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're taking out a lot this year. And, Why? And that sounds like a completely one-man job. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, you can't handle that on your own? Four tables? You got uh, it? Honestly? Just jump from one to the other. You got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Figure it it's out. It's worth the yeah, shot, right? right? Um, so, yeah, you know, this last year that Pole Lever has been running, that uh, Chicago D&D size has been running, we've kind of been figuring ourselves out. Um, and what our resources are, what we want to do, and we're kind of like right at the edge, ready to jump out and start doing things for the community. Yeah, there's all these things that we've been preparing, and now they're, we're finally getting to a point where we can reveal these things and start inviting people and having actual community outreach rather than us sitting and having meetings about community outreach. Yeah, yeah a, a, cool. a super a fun uh, event that I did uh, late last year was at the Hammond Public Library. Um, they ran their first fan con, uh, and I was really impressed at the quality of the small convention that they put on. They had vendors, they had guest speakers, um, and they asked me to come and run some games of Dungeons and Dragons, like in their library for their people. Very cool. Um, and it was astounding the, the 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 feedback that I got. You know, I had too many people that wanted to play and not enough of me to <laughs> run tables for them, and I felt bad. You got to figure know? it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so they're they're planning their con for this year. Um, and they asked me if I would come over the summer to nice. their library and run my, my curriculums, my courses. And, and, and like I just said before, there, there's such a need for these, these passionate people like us to facilitate these things. Uh, and, and we're ready to do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and you guys will be at GaryCon, obviously. Oh, yeah. yes. And what Absolutely. do you have? Absolutely. Anything planned special there? Are you just going to go hang out and just kind of nerd out about, uh, about things? or? or? Um, well, I know Joe's running a game. I'm also running a game uh, called Blood Tower, which is an original uh, module that I wrote, um, mm. which sold out, which was I was surprised. Uh, Don't be surprised. The game is full. That's I was awesome. happy. <laughs> um, uh, so I'll be running a game and then just paneling and, you know, mingling, meeting anyone who wants to play or... Yeah, GaryCon is actually a, a really big event, and in the last several years has been growing very quickly. Steadily, um, yeah. GaryCon is in honor of Gary Gygax, mm -hmm. uh, one of the creators of Dungeons & Dragons, um, and it's held in Lake Geneva, um, minutes away from his home, from where he actually created the game uh, um, you know, in Lake Geneva. Um, and there are just a, a growing number of people that attend the event, um, and they do a really good job of allowing creators casual players, serial, serious players, whatever, s register their own events. Um, so I'll be running two pull lever sessions, Andy will be running a session, and there are just four days of 8 a.m. to midnight sessions of Dungeons and Dragons, of all editions, of different varieties. Um, there's panels, um, there'll be some like big guest people there. 
Um, and are, are the Critical Role people going to be there? Because they're here this weekend. Like, what kind of faces will will be at the? Uh, so the probably the biggest. Joe Manganiello is going to be there. Um, nice. Mercer, Matt Mercer from Critical Role was there last year. Okay. I don't think he's on the guest list this year, but. Honestly, with them, they could just show up to play a game. That's probably like, yeah, not that, a that's the, that would be really cool. Uh, yeah. A lot of these celebrities or big people in the industry just show up to play yeah. and don't show up to be their personas mm-hmm. or their, their organizations. They just want to play. They have a disguise on, you know. Yeah. And the the <laughs> whole the whole convention mustache. is run <laughs> by the Gygax family. Um, his sons and, and uh, Gary Gygax's sons and children facilitate the event. Mm-hmm. Um, so just having that extra personal touch. You know, uh, they actually just opened up in Lake Geneva a Gary Gygax, like, small museum. Really? Did like, really? A, a permanent yeah. one, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, that you'll be able to, like, check out. Does he stuff. have a statue or, like, a miniature? So there, or? yeah. Yeah, so the, there's <laughs> the table. So like the statue is a miniature. Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> and in downtown Geneva, there's, like, a plaque, um, you know, that's in honor of Gary Gygax. Um, and it's sort of like a D&D culture thing to go there. Put your dice on the plaque and get them blessed by the creator. Yeah, there's some um, dice. I gotta, which, Mark, I you, you might need to do that. With I might need to get that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll send some dice with us. Mike Lowe and the Dark Dice. You. If yeah. you're keep buying side. dice, you're going to have to go up there every weekend. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah, we're super excited to be a part of it. Um, aside from running events, we're going to be gaming nonstop. All weekend. Um, yeah. There will be a lot of other like D&D community members, creators, um, who we'll be able to meet up with in person and get to know and just and just have a good time. Um, and that's next month. It's in March. Um, the last weekend, the 26th to the 29th. Uh, tickets are still available. If you want to go, you can get all four days or single days. Or you could just buy a, a, a spectator a, a pass, spectator yeah. pass just cool. to be there and walk yeah. around. So, yeah, if you're if you're in the area or not in the area and you just need some more D&D, GaryCon is, is where the place to be. be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Andy, what can you tell me about uh, the Chicago D&D Society's goals, maybe in the near term? Um, uh, in the near term, uh, so we actually have a couple of events coming up as well. Uh, we're working with Sip of Hope, which is a coffee shop um, – uh, in Logan, so all of the charity goes to prevention of suicide and uh, kind of the, having a resource for people who don't have resources, um, wow. whether it be for depression, anxiety. Um, it is a resource for them, and we were approached to do a game night there, and it's an event that's, again, kind of like in the works, um, but I believe we're going to be running character workshops there, uh, which should be cool. Um, we have another big thing coming up, which I'll put a pin in, because uh, that's kind of, I'm going to wait for Joe to talk about that. Um, we are still in the stages of kind of just meeting the community um, and growing as much as possible, playing with anyone who wants to play. Because Joe said it perfectly, the hunger and the thirst for Dungeons and Dragons is there. As new players, you, you mm-hmm. feel it. You went and looked at dice. Um, the storytelling aspect like is the weight of these yeah, are just right metal die <laughs> unheard it, of. Yeah, <laughs> then you get gemstone die. Um, the act of storytelling is one of the oldest things that we have as people. Um, I'm an actor. I, I've been an actor most of my life, so storytelling is natural um, to my core being. So when I found Dungeons and Dragons, it was it everything kind of fell into place. It fit perfectly, um, and everyone feels that. Anyone who plays. Mm-hmm tell stories they love telling stories um and kind of taking that and having all the eyes on us to then be spokespersons for chicago for um events for kind of a base for people who don't feel connected or Mm -hmm. uh, have a collective to go because there are games running all over the city and there's events all over the city but there's no unifying thing there's a thing here and there's a thing there yeah you know we're trying to put everything under one umbrella so that everyone can look and go oh there it is. There's Dungeons and Dragons in Chicago, and, and the game itself is just a, a huge outlet for people. Um, you know, I feel like in a day of, of technology, you're always in front of a computer, your phone, um, you're always busy, you're on the move, you're working. It's a great break from sort of everyday life. Mm-hmm. You sit down Agreed. at a table with a group of friends or some brand new people, and you just step away from everything. You know, you you role play as a new character as someone else. You get into their backstory, creating them. You They're, chant murder. You chant you murder. <laughs> we do that a lot to the point our streams. where uh, um, a Smithers wife gets freaked out in the <laughs> a little bit. that we're chanting. It's okay, my murder. wife does too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just such such an important thing that I think uh, is 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 the outlet for people. Mm. And if we can provide more opportunities for people to break into that, like my my goal, my personal goal is to introduce the game to as many people as possible. Um, and break down the barriers and the stigma of like, how oh, I, I could never do that. That's too overwhelming. It's not. 
It's really not. Well, it seems daunting. One of my favorite stories about Pull a Lever, um, I ran a corporate session uh, for a company that did their like corporate summer retreat in mm-hmm. Chicago, you know? Um, and so I had my table, and the CEO of the company, who was from Ireland, was sitting at the table as well. And you know, we started the game, he had his arms crossed, kind of like leaning back, really being like, what am I paying for yeah. this nerd to come in and run games for my employees? Technically this, not wrong. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that is what yeah. he's paying me for. Yes. But I guess he didn't see the point or the reason behind it. And by the end of the five-hour session, he was on his feet, arms up in the air chanting cast fireball kill the demon <laughs> like we need to kill him you know and just like that Everyone's moment like, Hold on. where i i like you i invest. got him you invest yeah. yeah i i got him and i got him into it he was having fun with his employees they were having fun with him and he just forgot completely that this was just a game and it's it's much much more than that well, and the benefits that it brings to your life you know it's a storytelling aspect but like you're working as a group. You're making eye contact with people. Like it helps alleviate depression and anxiety. It really does. While being a game, can improve every facet of your life. Absolutely. Okay. Very nice. Well, uh, if you wanted someone to reach out, <coughs> excuse me, to the Chicago D and D Society, how would they do so? Uh, on Instagram, uh, Shy D and D Society at Instagram or Twitter. Um, we are on there a hundred percent of the time, uh, posting content um and that's a a thing we'll eventually lead to is like content creation you know joe and i have talked about this um eventually you know creating more local groups exactly like what you're doing with descent uh, avernus it's you know more of that is what we need more murder but instagram (laughs) yeah yeah, exactly beautiful murder Murder hobo chance (laughs) uh so We've asked Joe this before mm-hmm. about his longest campaign and, and maybe the, the side stories that made it drift off into that long direction. Mm-hmm. I think it's your turn to tell that story of your longest campaign. Uh, well, I'm actually, so I'm relatively new to Dungeons and Dragons, probably about two-ish years. Oh, uh, little baby. I know, I'm a <laughs> tiny little baby. But I've, again, I'm an actor. I've been telling stories my whole life. Um, so it's not uncommon. Um, but the longest campaign we're running now is our homebrew campaign that I run. Uh, in a world called Oxmore. Um, it's about a year and some change into this campaign. Oh. And it's 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 a weird one. It's gotten weird, you know? We got uh, some character deaths, some uh, some warlocks who are playing with some demons. Uh, we just had a... Uh, so our George Booker, who plays the warlock Francis in our game, he just found a otherworldly patron from outer space. Uh, and he had the ability to name it. And I allowed him to do that. And he named it Mom. Oh. So Aww. His mom is uh, with him. Yeah, always. Um, so Did he kill it? No. Oh, my he, God. He, Dark. It's, <laughs> it's just a question. I no, it's a good should. question. <laughs> it's a, he is, well, he's... If that was in our game, one of us absolutely would have tried to attack it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And it would have been yeah. your brother. That was the, if it was Mark's parents, it would have just died naturally. Oh, like in an alley bad. somewhere. There's like a slight bad. metagaming where he's like, I know you're giving this to me, so I won't attack it. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. You're That's what's through. so excellent about it, though, is that you're right. You're building this backstory, and some people just want to give you the same, like, you, my parents got murdered in an alley where there was crime, maybe. Maybe. In crime alley. And the, uh, it's a, a beautiful part about the game, especially what I, I try to convey to new players, is that it can be played in a million different ways mm-hmm. and be played the way that you want to play it. Um, and something that I've experienced with Pull Lever DMing for, you know, corporations and private groups, whatever, is that people play the game differently. Like playing with the Chicago D&D Society, they are all fantastic role players. Um, a, a lot of the game is being in character, being in the scene, being immersed, and, and getting into that, um, that level of role playing. Some people love the combat. Love chanting murder. Um, Want to be swinging their swords and casting spells as much, as, as, much as possible. No. Um, so again, like kind of like back to that outlet. The game is whatever you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and it's once you figure that out, once you get comfortable with what you like doing, um, you can just run with it. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Great. So uh, you guys had something else you wanted to plug? Yeah. yeah. So um, this is a, a big thing for us, and we're hoping will be a big thing for the Chicago land uh, Dungeons and Dragons and gaming community. Um, so we have teamed up, uh, pull a lever, Chicago D and D Society, Smugglers Coffee, Smugglers Coffee, and, and Grindhouse Cafe, Cafe. Um, to form a coalition that we are calling the Third Coast Adventurers Guild. Um, Third Coast, in reference to like Michigan, uh, you sure. know, being in between the East and West Coast, and this coming September. 
We will be hosting our first Chicago charity event. Uh, we will be sponsoring the Northwest Indiana Food Bank. Um, nice. And running this huge event for people to come. It's getting to. big. Do you want to maybe uh, dilute some uh, details? Some uh, yeah. yeah. So we'll be running a, a module. There'll be tables for sale. You can buy a ticket to join a table. Uh, there will also be VIP tickets uh, for Joe's table, um, where he is writing an original module, a homebrewed module, uh, which each table will play. So each table will be playing the same module, so that you can all, after the game, go, "What did you do at that part? You took the left door. Oh my God, that's amazing." Um, Are these different modules throughout the day, or do you have to show up? So it's going to be a night event. So it'll be like four okay. o'clock. Probably we'll like uh, start, play, start playing, yeah. okay. uh, and then it'll go into the night where we have uh, sponsors that we're partnering with uh, uh, for an auction and food trucks, uh, food trucks, okay. alcoholic beverages, beer. Yeah, and um, uh, and so yeah, basically it'll it'll just be a place where if you have a group, a group of friends that love playing, you can purchase a whole table, table. and that comes with a dungeon master and everything you need play to play. Um, or if you don't have a group and you just want to come play and, and support the event, you can buy an individual ticket. Um, and all the proceeds will go back to the Northwest Indiana Food Bank. Um, and we're really excited to host this event. And it's going to be our kickstart uh, for the Third Coast um, Adventurers Guild. Um, and we're using this coalition um, as a platform to, again, grow the Chicago d, &D community as sort of like a, a unified title a representation of what we all want. Um, so we have our expertise, our passion, our businesses, our resources, all behind it, all driving it forward um, so that everyone can look at us and be like, this is, this is it. This is what we want to be a part of. Um, nice. And we're, we're, we're super excited. This is sort of our first time like yeah, talking about it. About and it's it. very exciting. It is very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to have like waiters in character bringing beverages and hors d'oeuvres like yeah, you in said a you're, Vegas casino? You're good to do that, ready right? for that. Right? I can do that. Yeah. If you guys need me to. Can I get the contract? <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it for you. We'll um, just so yeah. act out the actual fights. Like yeah. Mark and I will fight each other in the background. <laughs> Murder. It'll come naturally. It'll be great. Chant murder in the background. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so later this summer, um, probably midsummer, we'll have more specific details mm -hmm. about how to purchase tickets um, and, and everything behind it. Um, so if you keep up with Paul Ever on Instagram, Chicago D D Society on Instagram, but more importantly, the Third Coast Adventurers Guild Instagram, which we just launched it uh, launched yesterday. yesterday yeah. um, we'll be posting all details for that for the upcoming event and more a as we you know really dig down into everything. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Very cool. You, you can't awesome. see my grin because you're probably listening, but it's good. It's a good grin. You're, you're excited. You can yeah. tell. <laughs> you're excited. Andy, I'm curious, uh, as an actor, what, mm -hmm. what character do you play? Uh, so I usually dungeon master, so everything, because okay. like, there's worlds happening in my brain, as with most dungeon masters. Uh, so it's a little bit of everything. Uh, but when I do play, I usually gravitate towards clerics or, um, or fighters, Ooh. just because I like to, yeah, chant murder. I mean, Absolutely. How does that part. work when you play together? If you like playing as a DM and you're oh, a DM I too. default to the 15 year oh. experience. Okay. Of <laughs> Joe right. over I just here. wanted to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, he, like, how he, dare you? he did join our our uh, home home campaign the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, oh, why am I nervous? My palms are sweating. I hope I do good. If I forget a rule, is you going to be? Oh. And then Joe sits at the table, and I'm like, oh, well, okay, Joe's here. Yeah, let's play. Let's <laughs> play. No, hey, you're a fantastic DM. Absolutely. Hmm. The, the, your, your details and descriptions. and It also just breaks down all barriers when people sit at a table. You know, like we're all here. We all have dice. We all have a character or a story that we're trying to tell. And it really does just kind of break down those levels of, oh, I think they're, they're, they're much more knowledgeable than me. No, we're all here to play. And then that's the thing, you know, whether you've been DMing like myself for 15 plus years mm -hmm. or you've been DMing recently, um, like when I came to your table, I was worried that I was going to be backseat DMing, <laughs> that I was going to be critical or that I'd just be bored, you know, mm -hmm. because as a DM, you're doing so much. And as a player, it's a little more lax. But as soon as I sat down with you guys, I just fell right into it. And, and, and it's just a natural thing, you know. Um, so, yeah. And that is fun with, especially Shy D&D, we do role play a lot. So there are times when I just, like, get to sit back and watch them go. And that's a Dungeon Master's dream, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. if they're having fun, then oh, good. They exist. Okay. I Wonderful. Like to th I, I sit in the background just like, how am I going to opt this now? When, yeah. Whenever there's, like, <laughs> yeah. that intense exchange, you're like, shit, what should I do now? I can't say that my parents have been murdered again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I have to grow? <laughs> yeah. So if you're interested in this at all, you can find DM uh, games that Joe DMs on our Twitch stream at the underscore Chumpcast. 
do you have anything out there that's on YouTube or anything? Uh, like that? Not at the moment. We're still in the well, beginning we're, we're stages gonna of creation. We're going to work on that. Yeah, I, I'm going to join your game. I thought we talked about this before. No, Martin, um, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> I will be Don't chanting murder out. from now. Yes. <laughs> um, All right. Anything else you guys want to plug? Um, thank you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you so much Chuck for Loto having Comics us. For ha- like this is yeah. an amazing yeah. opportunity. Um, you know, something I'm super thankful. Uh, you know, just knowing you guys has been awesome. Uh, thank you, everyone in Chicago who has supported Pull a Lever um, and, and booked me for games or has been, um, you know, uh, complimentive of, of my work and things that I do. Um, just, yeah, thank you, everyone in Chicago that's a part of this. Yeah, I'm going to sh- shout out to Chicago as well. The amount of people that have reached out to us to play, uh, we're working on it. We're getting events together so that we can all play together. Uh, I that's promise. Awesome. Well, thank you very Pretty much cool. to everybody that stopped by and anybody who's uh, viewing this. Find us all weekend at C2E2. Again, booth 1677. We are the Chumpcast. We also share this booth with Chuck Loda Comics. Make sure you follow them on YouTube. And until next time, Chumps out.